a hospital room for weeks at a time. But we found a hospital with a therapeutic approach for these young patients. You can't confine their imaginations. I made these rings out of the 3D printer. Like a lot of kids, Dale and James likes to make things. But what she makes and where she makes them make Dalen quite the uncommon kid. Take this. Here I'm creating like a dryer. Some wooden sticks, a fan, plastic rings made with a 3D printer, and check it out, a device to help kids with cystic fibrosis dry their nebulizers. Mom, feel. Dalen does most of her inventing at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee, where she spends a lot of time. Because at the age of 14, Dale and James has CF herself, a chronic lung disease. Sometimes I'm scared to admit it, but then sometimes I'm completely open about it. Diagnosed at the age of four, she's often hospitalized in isolation for two to three weeks at a time. I would go crazy because I'm not allowed to go out of my room, so I'd just be stuck in here, with nothing to do. So what can we use that for? Which is where Gokul Krishnan comes in. A volunteer at Vanderbilt Children's, his own imagination was sparked by another young patient one day. She said, hey, imagine if we had a space that would allow us to leave our bed, move around. So Krishnan came up with the mobile maker space to get kids moving more. It's a cart equipped with a camera, a touchscreen computer, circuit building kits, and the 3D printer. I needed a doorbell. Holly Dyer built this doorbell for her nurses and a pill case with an LED light so patients can find their pills at night. It rotates too. Why? No particular reason, except that Holly's eight, and that's an appealing design feature for an eight-year-old. With the mobile maker space, the kids are a lot more active. They're designing, they're making, they're collaborating. Krishnan's idea doesn't just help their minds. Dr. Rebecca Brown is Dalen's doctor. She's up and out of her bed more often, which is helping her treatments be even more effective. Dalen, who usually takes less than 300 steps a day at the hospital, takes more than 1,500 when the maker space is in a room. It's just been overall a positive experience, especially for her mental health. You can't let a little disease bring you down. No, she can't. At least not judging from this picture, she drew with help from the mobile makerspace, a pair of lungs looking like a butterfly's wings. One day, I'm hoping that our lungs will fly free. Dalen lists her goals as wanting one day to get married, have kids, become a cosmetologist, and inspire people. She can cross that last one off the list already. And that is the CBS Evening News for tonight. Later on CBS, 48 hours. For now, I'm Jim Axelrod in New York. And for all of us here at CBS News, thanks for joining us, and good night. This is Oklahoma's own News on 6 in high definition. Our top story at 6, one person is dead after an officer-involved shooting in Miami. Good evening, I'm Megan Farley. OHP says 63-year-old Gary Collins refused to pull over for troopers during a driver license checkpoint around 9.30 last night. They say he then led OHP on a six-block chase and got out of his vehicle with a semi-automatic pistol in his hands. The trooper saw that and fired his weapon, killing Collins. We don't want to have to do this, but when we're put in that situation, our training, our ability or our want, our desire, our need to survive definitely kicks in. And that's pretty much what happened today. The trooper was put in that position to defend himself. Troopers say it isn't clear why Collins ran, and they're currently reviewing dash cam video from the patrol unit. The trooper who shot is expected to be placed on administrative leave while the case is investigated. Tulsa police say they arrested a man after investigating a rape at the Best Budget Motel near Admiral and Sheridan Friday afternoon. Officers arrested 37-year-old Aaron Dean for first-degree rape, kidnapping, and assault. After talking with the victim at the motel, investigators say they located Dean and arrested him. OHP troopers say a Sepulpa man
man is dead after a motorcycle wreck on Highway 412. The crash happened around 1130 Friday night near 129th West Avenue. Troopers say Jeremy Townley's motorcycle left the highway and hit the cable barrier in the center median. EMSA paramedics took Townley to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Tulsa crews were up early this morning picking up storm debris from last month's tornado that hit parts of West Tulsa. The pickup was free and storm victims just had to bring trees and branches to the curb. News on 6 reporter Tony Russell has this update from neighbors who never thought they would get help from the city. A lot of these neighbors in this area, West Tulsa, affected by the March 25th tornado are getting some relief from these crews working overtime to pick up the debris. This helps a whole lot just to have it out of the way. Street by street, debris piles are getting hauled off. The Tulsa Trash Board approved the special pickup for the neighborhood. Residents trying to get rid of their debris complained when the city only offered bulky waste pickup and green waste drop off after the storm. Jessica Holliday had family come from all across the state to help her clean up. To know that there was going to be no help besides chainsaws and bonfires, it's unreal to know that they're actually coming in with the big trucks and the cranes to, to help. The debris was piling up. This stuff has been out here since the Saturday after the tornado hit. We had a bunch of volunteers come and help us with the tree, but then all this stuff has been sitting here and it's really quite nerve wracking. When we spoke with Holiday, you could hear the city trucks about a block down. It's in sight that there's going to be a brighter day. For $360,000, 60 city workers and trucks came out to clean up between Edison and the Arkansas River. They won't go home until it's all picked up. I'm very excited for them to hurry up and get here and get it gone. <laughs> the city says residents who already paid for bulky waste pickup for storm damage debris in West Tulsa will be reimbursed. Tony Russell, News on 6. Terrific weather returned for our Saturday. I hope you had a chance to get out and enjoy that sunshine. Hopefully not too much of it. In any case, it warmed up nicely today in advance of a cold front that is now sliding towards the Oklahoma state line. What you see to our northeast, though, another round of severe weather over the central portions of the Midwest down into the Ohio River Valley. For us, though, it is a quiet scene, one with very few clouds. In fact, you have to look up into Kansas to really find much cloud cover into far northeastern Oklahoma. A few more clouds popping up this evening, but not a lot more. It's a mostly clear evening out there, and the sunshine allowed us to warm into the mid 80s for Tulsa, 85 in Muskogee, 74 in Coffeyville. Into the Tulsa area, these numbers are still rather nice. 80 degrees in Sky took 84. Downtown Tulsa down to Jinx and along with Sand Springs, about 82 in Broken Arrow. As we look at the evening hours, we expect a modest drop off in temperatures down to 73. Winds are switching to the north with a cold front arriving, but should be a pleasant one out there for whatever plans you may have. Heading into Sunday, nice but severe weather returns. More details on that ahead. All right, Mike, thank you. Food truck days could soon extend to more than just one day thanks to a new venture called the Park in the Pearl. News on 6 reporter Katira Winfrey is there at the event for the food court's trial run and explains what all of this means for local foodies. Katira. Well, this is the Park in the Pearl, and organizers say in larger cities like Austin, Denver, and San Francisco, this is the norm. And they say with Tulsa continuing to grow, it's important that the food truck industry also grows. Now, live music, open air, and of course, plenty of food is giving the public an open house view of what the Park in the Pearl will have to offer when it's fully up and running. Organizers say the vision for the park has been nearly two and a half years in the making. This open space will be the permanent location. About seven trucks will be able to park here at once. Now this trial run is only happening today and tomorrow, but eventually food trucks will be parked here six days a week for lunch and dinner. And organizers say food truck day, extra food truck days means more money will go back into the city. We're actually uh, working with the city. Uh, Tuesday is our last meeting with them. Um, we'll find out uh, kind of everything that we need to get done prior to us opening. And then hopefully after that, we should be open within a month or two. And today, the park in the Pearl at Peoria and 5th Street is going to be open till about 10 o'clock tonight. And tomorrow, it's going to be open from noon to 6 o'clock. And you can find out more information on all of that at our website, newson6.com. Katira Winfrey, News on 6. 
And happening now, one of downtown Tulsa's institutions, Coney Island, is opening its new location here in the Brady Arts District at Archer in Maine. The store opened at Tulsa's first as Tulsa's first fast food restaurant back in the 1920s. The family who owns the restaurant wanted to keep the feel of the old place, so they moved over the desks, the food line, and even the grill. 